So guys, there is a lot going on with the progress of full self-driving this year. Tesla is going all hands on deck with the robo-taxi launch happening in the next few months. According to Elon's latest Twitter post, they are aiming for an official announcement on August the 8th of this year. This somehow coincides with the lucky number in China of 8 and this likely indicates that they will be releasing the robo-taxi service first within the country. To further confirm this theory, a user on Twitter has recently broken down all the dates as well as the recent full self-driving approval by the Chinese Transport Authority. And to that, he has even gotten a response from Elon for this post and that essentially confirms that this date is going to be the case as well as all the reasons for it. Now this, in my opinion, makes a lot of sense as there are several robo-taxi fleets running on the streets of China as we speak and Tesla needs to enter the market before it gets flooded with even more. So just shortly after that, Tesla's official Twitter page posted early renderings of what this ride hailing app will eventually look like. It finally looks like real life. It looks very advanced with 3D renderings and all the information that you would need as a person ordering a vehicle. Compared to what we had seen three years ago during the first announcement, this version of the app looks way more refined and way more usable in terms of what you would see in real life. You simply just open the Tesla app, hit the summon button and there will be the ETA right at the bottom of the app as well as all the critical information such as the temperature, the seating capacity, and so much more. Believe it or not, Tesla is making great stride with the current progress of full self-driving supervised and with their upcoming second generation vehicle as well as their new robo-taxi dedicated platform, they will be releasing this sooner than later. Alright, so if you aren't aware, there is one critical difference between Tesla's approach versus any other competitor out there. This is the fact that Tesla will be using an all vision system. So far, with the progress of full self-driving that's available in the US and in Canada, they have proven that having cameras alone is not necessarily a bad thing. They can scale this extremely quickly and they can scale it for much cheaper than any other company out there. Those companies that we are speaking of are using a mixture of radar, LiDAR and ultrasonic sensors. But of course, there is no argument that it is always a really great thing to have redundant systems, having the radar and the LiDAR taken place if something happens to the vision system is a really nice peace of mind. However, this brings up a lot of compute power as well as a lot of money and this is where Tesla's system really excels. So with the current camera suite that is available on all Teslas right now, they have been able to do very incredible things. Cars can go from from point A to point B with very little to no interactions at all. Of course, this can't be said for all scenarios and all locations, but the gist of it is a version 12 is a big leap in what we are hoping for, and hopefully they can continue to make this better, more enhanced, and work in more areas. All right, so let's get real here. Even with the great progress of full self-driving software, there is what we call the March of Nines. What this practically means is even if the car is excellent, in 99.999% of the time, there is still the 9.9999 that Tesla will need to overcome before they make this car perfect. Now, the vision system that we have in our cars right now are nowhere near the 99%. In fact, it is more closer to the low 90% if you had to put a hard number on it. As time goes on and the software gets better, this will slowly increase to the top end. However, once they get to the top, there will be physical bottlenecks that they have to address. So this is exactly where Hardware 5 comes into play and this is where you have to be aware what kind of vehicle you're picking up up today and if it will be able to do what you expect in the future. Looking back at the iterational differences between the full self-driving hardware from Tesla, you can clearly see the intentional upgrades that they have put into each and every single car. This here is not accounting for all the computer upgrades and all the different sensors throughout the years. This is purely looking at their vision system, the camera suite that is surrounding the vehicle. Moving from hardware 1 to hardware 2, you go from a single camera up to 8 cameras surrounding the car. From hardware 2 to hardware 3, you get an additional camera on the interior of the car, making this 9 altogether. Then going from hardware 3 to hardware 4 in the last couple of months, you can see that we have actually gained zero hardware differences. And when it comes down to it, you have in fact lost another camera going from hardware 3 to hardware 4. This brings you from 9 cameras total now back down to 8. Now 
what's interesting about all this is Tesla's decision instead of redesigning the housing they have just placed a dummy unit right in place of where the previous camera should have been. Now there has been a lot of theory circulating around whether this camera was just a cost saving measure or if it was just a dummy placement in case of a future retrofit but when it comes down to it if Tesla found that this camera was unnecessary they would redesign the entire housing instead of placing a blank cover. This leads me to believe that there is something else they are working on. Well here we are and my assumptions have likely been confirmed hardware 4 in its current state should never have existed. Tesla had originally planned for hardware 3 to be obsolete much sooner than today but through iterations of software updates they were able to extend the life of older hardware. Pushing all the compute onto the second node of the CPU they have still yet to hit the limitations of what this SoC is able to handle. So because of this they were given the additional leeway to continue the development and the redesign of their next generation hardware exactly what they had imagined for it to be. So long story short the upcoming hardware 5 was supposedly the next generation redesigned hardware that was coming from what they had envisioned when they originally launched hardware 3. But because of all the additional leeway and the potential hardware 3 was able to handle they created another stepping stone one that didn't create any additional sensors or any additional complexity. Hardware 4 as we call it now was that stepping stone and it came with increased resolution but not much else. So believe it or not this is not what Tesla had intended. This should have been called hardware 3.5 similar to what they had done with hardware 2.5 in the past and the next generation hardware is going to be the one that they had envisioned all along. Now skipping all the additional noise let's talk about hardware 5 and what we know so far. According to China Times Tesla is now working with TSMC to create the next generation full self-driving computer. These 3 nanometer enhanced chips will be using the 3NP manufacturing process. It will provide higher performance, higher transistor density and using a lot less power. In addition to being a more powerful chip that uses less power they have also increased the working extreme temperature that the chips are able to endure going from negative 40 degrees celsius all the way to 150 degrees celsius on the top end. This means that the car as well as the full self driving computer is able to endure extreme temperatures in various different regions going from extreme coldness all the way to extreme hotness and without worrying about any of cooling issues. In addition to the computer upgrade itself we will also be seeing a jump in camera sensors with the upcoming hardware 5. This will include the new phoenix radar that has been seen in the model S and X, additional cameras for cross traffic on the front and the rear as well as the front bumper camera that we have already seen on the Cybertruck. Now in addition to the jump in the number of sensors we will also be the quality of sensors improve as well. These are going to be something that we have never seen before. Recent sources have indicated that Tesla will be using what they call hybrid lenses on their next generation cameras. These new cameras will come with variable aperture lenses that will better control for bright light situations in darker environments environments. No longer are you going to be seeing those warning messages pop up on the screen telling you that a camera has been blocked or blinded. In addition to this as part of the hybrid lens they will be introducing what's called the waterproof design. They will be integrating heating elements directly on the lens rather than the glass cover itself. So in the case of ice, snow or condensation these will be able to clear it off immediately rather than have to wait a few minutes. Added to all this they will finally be adding a water repellent coating fused used into the manufacturing process of the lens making sure that there is no water droplet that sits on the lens itself when you are driving in a rainy day. And although it hasn't been noted here with hardware 5 they could also be adding a spray nozzle as a redundancy for the camera similar to what they did with the front bumper camera of the Cybertruck. Now all this is great addition for their mass marketed vehicles as well as their upcoming robo taxi as there is no scenario where somebody is able to wipe off the camera or the camera gets blinded by the sun or the darkness and it fails to work. Alright so with all the good stuff here you're probably asking when this is going to be coming out. 
Well, Hardware 5 is already in the production stages and they are planning to have this launch in their mass marketed vehicles by late this year. This is just in time for their RoboTaxi launch as well as their next generation vehicles. I do have a video specific to the Hardware 5 topic. If you have missed it or you want to check it out, I'll drop a link in the description below, but there is a lot of detail over there and a lot of things to run over. So yeah, we all know that this was coming sooner or later. Hardware 4 has not been a very very big upgrade compared to what Hardware 3 was. They haven't even started the integration process into the full self-driving stack to take advantage of all the capabilities that Hardware 4 is able to provide, but essentially it is just a higher resolution camera and a better computer to process all that data. With this year being the year that Tesla pushes greatly for their AI and full self-driving software, it's no doubt that they are going to be upgrading all these sensors and introducing new products. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Are you now hesitant to pick up a newer car with hardware 4 knowing that it's not as powerful as the upcoming next generation hardware or you don't really mind as long as the car is able to do what Tesla has promised. I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more on hardware 5 in the next couple of months so this is just an early preview I want to share with you guys but I will be keeping up to date on every little thing that comes up so stick around and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification if you haven't already done so and follow me on X or Twitter at HeyJohnE. Over there, you guys will get the latest and you can chat with me, DM with me anytime, and I will try to respond as quickly as possible. I do also have a Patreon link if you want to support the channel. I will drop it in the description below. But anyways, this should wrap it up for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. This is John once again. Peace out.